Okay, this is part two of lesson 7.2, um, and we're going to do an example uh, question that you might see with the addition or subtraction of sine cos. Um, and here it is. Angle x is in the first quadrant, and angle y is in the second quadrant, such that cosine of x is 6 over 11, and sine of y is 3 over 7. This is a two-part question. We want to find cos y and sine x. So we have the opposites right now. We know what cos x is, we want to know what cos y is. And we, want, we know what sine y is, so we want to find what sine x is. Why do we want to do that? Well, eventually we're going to find the exact value of sine x plus y. And in order to do that, we need all four combinations. So let's start with uh, cos y and sine x. What do we know? Well, we know that sine Or sorry, what do we know about angle x? Well, we know that angle x is in the first quadrant. So I'm going to graph an angle in the first quadrant. There's my angle in the first quadrant, and that's my angle x. What do we know about angle x? Well, we know that the cosine of x is 6 over 11. What do we know about cosine? Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the adjacent side is 6, and the hypotenuse side is 11. So we actually know a lot about angle x. Um, to find the exact value of sine x, though, which we don't know, we would need to know what our opposite side is over our hypotenuse. So we want to know what, I'm going to give this a label, let's call it a. We want to know what a over 11 is. We don't know A. Can we find A? Yes, we can. By the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Which means that A squared is 6 squared, or A squared plus 6 squared equals 11 squared. So A would just be the square root of 11 squared plus 6 squared, which is the square root of 84, 85. <clears throat> so now we know A. A is root 85. Therefore, sine x is root 85 over 11. What have we just done? Well, the only thing we knew about x was that cosine of angle x was 6 over 11. We also knew that it was in the first quadrant. So we graphed the angle x in the first quadrant, labeled the triangle using the two sides adjacent and the hypotenuse we knew, found the third side using Pythagorean theorem, and used that third side to write the sine ratio, which was opposite over hypotenuse. So now we know what sine x is. We can do the exact same thing when looking for cos y. We know angle y is in the second quadrant, so let's graph an angle in the second quadrant. And that's our angle y. What do we know about y? Well, we know that sine y is 3 over 7. Sine is opposite 3 over hypotenuse 7. So we need to find our unknown side here. I'm going to call it b. Why do we need to find that side? Well, we want to know what cos y is. And cos y would be adjacent over hypotenuse, or b over 7. So let's do some Pythagorean theorem. We got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a squared is 3 squared plus b squared equals 7 squared. So b is just 7 squared minus 3 squared square root. So b is root 40. Kind of. b is to the left. Of zero. While b is root 40, we're not actually looking for b, we're looking for negative b because we're on the negative side. And if we want negative b, we have to change its side. So it's actually negative root 40 because of where we've grafted on the Cartesian plane. Because this is our beta and this is our theta, and theta takes us into the second quadrant, which would make the x side or b side negative. So to find the exact value of cos y, since we're in the second quadrant, where cosine, C-A-S-T, cast rule, 
where cosine is negative, we have to use negative 40 over 7. Otherwise, cosine would be positive and it would violate the cast rule, which we don't want to do. So, there's what cos y is. So now we've got sine x and we've got cos y. The question gave us cos x and sine y. Part b wants us to find the exact value for sine x plus y. Well, sine x plus y, we can use the identity that we saw in the last lesson. What do we want, sorry? Uh, we want sine x plus y. So we have to use this addition formula for sines. Sine a plus b can be modeled like sine x plus y. To evaluate it, we would do sine x times cos y plus cos x times sine y. So let's write that down. If we want to evaluate sine x plus y, we want sine x times cos y first. And then cos x times sine y with a plus sign in the middle. Plus cos x sine y. So that's what sine x plus y is, expanded. And now we know what all these ratios are equal to, so let's plug them in. Sine x, we found in our first example here, root 85 over 11. Cos y, we found also, is negative 40 over 7. Plus cos x is 6 over 11, given to us in the question. And sine y, also given in the question, is 3 over 7. <clears throat> now we can expand and collect like terms. Not collect like terms. Now we can expand and simplify. So let's expand. Root 85 times negative 40. Ooh. I think I wrote something wrong here. Let me double check really quick. Uh, oh. Negative root 40. Here we go. Root 85 times negative root 40. Multiply what's underneath the root. We know it's going to come at negative because there's a negative sign. And 85 times 40 is 3,400. Over 11 times 7 is 77. Plus 6 times 3 is 18. Over 77. So we have a common denominator, which is nice. So we can add the numerators. I'm going to simplify this first. Uh, root 3,400. Well, we can break it down into 34 times 100. And we can square root 100 and get 10. So this is the same as negative 10 root 34. And there's nothing else we can pull out of 34 to simplify it anymore, so that's as simplified as possible. Uh, and plus 18, and that's all over 77. So now you have a choice. You can leave your expression written like this. If you don't like the leading negative, you can flip it and write it as 18 minus 10 root 34. But for our sake, it doesn't matter to me which way you leave it. So here we go. This is the exact value of sine x plus y when we are only given cos x and sine y. Thanks for watching. There is a practice example below, which is very similar to the one we just did. Uh, the solution is in your textbook if you want to check to see how you did, and there's some annotations there to kind of help you along your way if the video didn't make sense. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.